Joining me now is the president of the National Action Network and host of MSNBC's Politic Politics Nation, Reverend Al Sharpton. So, Rev, you've been at the forefront of efforts to address poverty, crime, police brutality for decades. I mean, all of these issues uh, in, in a lot of ways are interconnected. Um, in, from your vantage point, how has Joe Biden changed on the issue of crime from 1991 up to the present? Well, I watched carefully his and Attorney General Garland's statement today because I protested the 94 crime bill uh, almost 34 years ago when, as you correctly said, most of the Congressional Black Caucus and many civil rights leaders supported it. Uh, a lot of the reaction was to the high crime at the time, which all of us wanted to deal with. But we did not feel that three strikes in you out and uh, giving disparate, d d disproportionate sentences to people with crack cocaine as opposed to loose cocaine was, was the answer. And it was going to lead to what it did lead to, mass incarceration. Today, they did not go at the end of the crime line as much as they did the beginning, which is what we talked about in the early 90s. They talked about guns. They talked about how the guns get into our community. They talked about dealing with manufacturing and gun laws. And I think that that is a wiser approach. But I would hasten to add, Zelina, that they need to make sure as they put these things into place that they also pass laws like the George Floyd Criminal uh, Policing Act so that we do not create an atmosphere where police are therefore let loose with no federal laws that tell them how far they could go while they confiscate the guns or go after the gun manufacturers. They must wed this whole question of gun violence with police legislation because just like we were in the era, I mean, no one could have laid it out better than you did tonight. We were in the era of high crime. We were in the era of Rodney King. Mm -hmm. In this time, we're in the era of rising gun violence, tick uh, uh, up in gun violence, and George Floyd. And we can't make the same mistake mm -hmm. where we have a un, an imbalance in how we react to one and not balance it with the other. Right. So do you think that this administration, particularly with the uh, addition of Senator Kamala Harris, who comes from a background as a prosecutor, but also has actually a really different perspective, even as a prosecutor, on what are some of the solutions to crime? Um, and in some ways, I feel like this administration has adjusted the perspective. It's thinking about what are the causes of crime right? Guns, poverty, lack of education, lack of housing, lack of resources, as opposed to simply focusing on the punishment for crimes as a deterrent to crime. Is that is that a good summation of sort of the shift you see and even how this administration talks about the solutions versus how, you know, Senator Joe Biden used to talk about it, which frankly feels outdated? I think that uh, you would have to say that uh, Vice President Harris brings a different perspective, which is good and, and gives some balancing. And I also think that uh, Joe Biden himself has grown and has openly said that the uh, crime bill of 94 was not uh, done right and that he could see where uh, now they should have done things differently. He came to a uh, National Action Network's Martin Luther King breakfast in 19, 2019, and openly uh, said where he was wrong in aspects of the crime bill. So I think some of that, he's seen the results of what was done. I think the Congressional Black Caucus that was supportive in 94 is not supportive now without these restraints like a George Floyd bill. So I think the climate is different. The reality, though, and the thing that bothers us the most is that Blacks live in the worst of both worlds. We are afraid of the cops and the mm. robbers, and we need the uh, laws that right. will save us from both. 
In terms of the conversations that you've had recently with the White House, what what are, if you can share some of the conversations you've had about the issue of crime? I know that you've had a lot of conversations about the policing bill that is being considered in the Senate, and you've met recently with the administration, but has the issue of you know, the, the rise in crime that's happening around the country right now, has that come up in your discussions? I've talked to Cedric Richmond at the White House about it, who has his ear to the ground. I think uh, he has a sensitivity uh, that is good uh, to be there on the West Wing. And I think that uh, he is very sensitive to the fact that we need to deal with this with balance and that they're going to have to do community policing. They need the validators of those of us that are on the ground that works in these communities every day, because all of this is built on, as any community, on trust. And I think he understands that partnership. So I'm comfortable with Cedric uh, Richmond being right in the middle of these conversations. But again, the proof is going to be in the pudding. We need both legislations done. We need whatever they're going to do with policing, and we need whatever they're going to do about policing to be done at the same time. You can't do one and then the other, and then you in that gap may have some mm-hmm. incidents that would all turn it all the way around. Right. It feels to me like if you don't have a balanced um, approach to this, you would end up like we did in the 90s with you throw money at the problem. You just send a whole bunch of police officers. And that actually doesn't do much to look. I mean, the crime rate did fall. But I would argue, actually, that it's not because of the increased presence of police. Um, that was deterring crime, other conditions changed. Um, Do you think that the administration understands that they can't just add more police officers to the the streets to solve this problem, that they need that nuanced and balanced approach that you're talking about? No, I think that, I think they do in my conversations, uh, they they certainly, the vice president understands it, and Richmond does. And I think in the conversation I had with Biden about the George Floyd bill, and uh, we had a few minutes when he spoke in Tulsa, I think he gets it. The question is, can they get the Senate to pass this George Floyd bill and can they be can they balance it? But the worst thing in the world is to add more police without having the restraints on police or the guidelines of what is bad policing. This Friday, we are going to sentence uh, Derek Chauvin to jail, a policeman who killed George Floyd this Friday. So in the middle of the president making a speech today, and a good one about gun violence, two days later, we're putting a policeman in jail in the same week. So we need to understand that we walk with both feet. We can't hop and then expect that we have had a balanced walk unless we don't have the other, leg. those of us that don't. But we have the ability to have both legs of the criminal justice work simultaneously, and we ought to do that, and we ought to insist on that. Otherwise, we're going to end up with the same results we ended up with 30 years ago. And it is not wise to make the same mistake again. That is right. That is absolutely right. Uh, Reverend Al Sharpton, thank you so much for taking the time out. I know you're a very busy person. Uh, Thank you for taking the time. Please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.